What else we got? Dr. Ann, hope all is well. I am a 44 year old male. I recently went into a TRT clinic in West Des Moines, Iowa. I have had insurance clients of mine that have been using TRT for some years and it shows. I went into the T clinic last week to see what it was all about and to get my blood drawn. From that Thursday to Monday, I went hunting on YouTube for people's results, etc. Then I came across your channel and many others. My blood draws came back with a total test of 334 nanograms per deciliter and the nurse practitioner, main person at the location, flew through the rest of the stuff. The only thing I caught was the total test. I should call back to see what the free test was at. Basically, she said your numbers look good besides the test level and I'm a candidate for TRT. Then gave me the blanketed cell of HCG and AI and Sipunate one time per week. My question is this, a guy on YouTube, Jake, was going off on how terrible AIs are for you. Um, kind of freaked me out to the point that I started to challenge the nurse practitioner. Red flag. She didn't know what I was talking about when I said AIs. She also said that anastrozole doesn't block the receptors. She said it only gets rid of the extra estrogen produced from the extra test. Okay. Not sure how the body discerns from some estrogen and not all. Well, it doesn't. Uh, if that's okay, I'll keep reading. If I took the AI, can it hurt me? I'm saying that even a microdose can cause brain fog, which is a medical condition, not <laughs> vascular issues, joint issues, bone density loss, and it stops the breakdown of visceral fat. He was saying if you're not obese, insulin resistant, you should be between 20 to 45. I'm not sure what that means. Does the AI block the receptors and can this cause major issues? Thanks, doctor. Aaron Croft. Okay. So, boy, this is a, this is a big question. <laughs> I get asked all the time about AIs because people go online these days. And, you know, what I tell people often is that, what are you going to read online? You're going to read when everything's hunky-dory, normal, or going great? Or are you going to read when somebody thinks a disaster has occurred? So you're definitely going to see information skewed towards something going wrong rather than, hey, this is great. What do they say? You know, people will tell 20 people about, you know, a, a bad thing, a bad experience, as opposed to maybe two people will mention a good thing or so, something like that. That's right. I get it. Um, so without doing an ad hominem attack, he's not a doctor. Now, that said, I mean, there are guys out there that are providing value valuable information like Nelson Virgil, who's not a doctor either, but he's well-educated. I think he's a former chemist um, and he does his research and he will at least say things that aren't, well, he doesn't say things that aren't true and uh, doesn't say risky things if I can say it that way. Okay. My problem with is that it, I don't know what research he's looking at, but from what I see, he's twisting the research, okay? Um, when he says something, for example, uh, and you know what? This isn't fair either because this is secondhand. Um, I've already right. gotten on a, on a podcast a long time ago with Nelson. Oh, really? Um, and um, addressed the issue, but I think very, very lightly because, you know, some of it's opinion, and that, that, can, that I can respect. <coughs> Excuse me, but when you go against what's in the studies, uh, then I have an issue. Um, when he says here uh, that even a microdose can cause, for example, bone density loss, really? I suppose it can. A lot of things have the possibility, if the stars are aligned, to do something. But in general, for example, with people on t males on testosterone replacement therapy. Bone density issues because of even a microdose, even a major dose of anastrozole is ridiculous. These guys are moving weights typically. Even if they're not moving weights, they're doing weight-bearing exercise. Because why? Because they have the energy because they're on testosterone, testosterone again. So bone density issues, I've never, and I'm an accountant first before I'm a doctor, right? So I'm presumably honest and conservative. 
in all my years and all my patients, I've never seen a male with a bone density, bone density issue on TRT and on an AI or any sort of CERM for that matter either. That's just, that's, that's spinning the truth. Again, if that's, if he's being truly quoted, okay, then that's just, that's just not correct. Testosterone itself, we now know can help with bone density in and of itself. So to limit the estrogen, not gonna, and especially in a microdose, or like I said, even a macrodose, that's just, that's just spinning yarn here, okay? Um, and we can go on and on, but one thing that's not mentioned is what happens when you don't block the estrogen? Well, what we've known for years is, and I'm sure you know plenty of people in the gym, you can have an issue with gynecomastia, breast tissue growth, you can have an issue with water retention, fat retention, moodiness and irascibility, which a lot of people attribute to roid rage. Yeah. Okay, but while some steroids like halitestin, trimbolone can activate a more aggressiveness in the personality, those are not the norm. For most that I see with testosterone replacement therapy in particular, but with other anabolics like uh, nandrolone, oxandrolone, I don't see an increase in aggressiveness. Unless someone is naturally aggressive, then it will leverage their tendency to be aggressive. Right. But typically what I see because of the sense of well-being and the confidence, I see less aggression. I use the joke, you know, some guy wants to show off in front of his wife, for example, and starts starting a fight, and you're with your girl on your way to dinner, you go, dude, you're right, man, I I'm an idiot, go ahead. Because you know you'll crush the guy, <laughs> and why waste your time, and you feel like, hey, I don't need to prove anything, man, I feel great. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I don't see that but uh, anyway, back to the, the uh, estrogen control. One of the things that's ignored in all of this is, how about prostate cancer? There's a lot of information out there, and a lot of it's correlative, a lot of it's epidemiological, in other words, a lot of it's um, animal studies, but we have a lot of evidence that points to, um, what, particularly one of the estradiols, uh, estradiol 17 beta, that causes that activates the genes, which we all carry as men, for prostate cancer. And we've got studies showing that when you use um, testosterone, excuse me, estrogen alone, you are, uh, how, let's see, how they, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about how they design the studies. Anyway, all these studies are, I mean, you can just type in prostate cancer, comma, estrogen. And you can see a multitude of studies that will address this and get the, the particulars correct. But um, testosterone alone, let's just put it this way. We've shown um, in many studies, not only doesn't cause cancer, but can be used cyclically, cyclically to treat cancer. Okay, so, uh, you know, most people think of uh, treating cancer or, or um, yeah, treating cancer, the answer is to castrate the men either physically or chemically. Now, nowadays we do it chemically. But in other words, stop the androgen production, the testosterone production. It's important to differentiate those two though. And overdose the body with estrogens, okay? Well, we're rethinking that for a number of reasons, including a lot of these studies. Again, one of which is to use, and it was a small study, but there were more, of, more than one of them. I think this one I'm thinking about had an end of 16 people but they, they had cancer and it was treated with a cycle on, a cycle off, and the cycle on was a super physiologic dose in one study. Another study, it wasn't even a super physiologic dose. It's a joke, a joke that you know those of us who know about TRT would kind of laugh at, like that wasn't even a dose of treatment, right? So uh, not to get too, too far afield here, but one of the issues that needs to be addressed is prostate cancer. You know, brain fog versus prostate cancer, I know. I'll take brain fog over prostate cancer, okay? Um, and, you know, stops the breakdown of visceral fat. Really? How many patients, well, not patients, how many guys do you know, how many patients have I seen get on testosterone replacement therapy with an appropriate dose of an AI or some other form of estrogen control who lose a ton of fat? Yeah. Again, maybe he's being misquoted here but I can't tell you how many times patients come to me misquoting, saying st stuff that's not true, asking if they can get off the AI or telling me they already did because they watched one of the Okay, yeah, I, again, I don't mean to sound unprofessional, but uh, let's be responsible here. Um, and 
So you've heard this before. This is not your first time. Well, yeah. And I actually treat patients for a living, as do a lot of other doctors who follow the same protocols. Maybe not to the T. I might get my patient's estradiol sensitive down to 15 to 20 picograms per milliliter, assuming they don't have any other issues going on. And again, the main reason for that is twofold. One, you'll see the free testosterone rise. You'll see an SHBG drop when that when you get to that tipping point, somewhere around like 21 picograms per milliliter. This is what I've observed over time. And I'm not the only one who's observed it, but also because, don't forget, you need some estrogen. I totally agree for heart, brain, and joint health. But because of the potential for prostate cancer, I want to have the minimum amount, assuming you don't have other factors, and you read about, you know, joint pain, uh, you know, kind of a flu-like joint pain when people, you know, bury their estrogen or whatever they're calling it on the internet now, you know, I forget what the word they're using, but, you know, that's the latest thing going around is everyone who gets on an AI buries their estrogen. No, they don't. Some people do, and some people, they don't affect at all. Typically, rarely, actually, does someone have an effect like, oh, my, my joints ache or I feel like my tendons are weaker mm. when they bring their estrogen down too low. Some people, again, very rarely will say it takes away from their libido. But most people, if we get their estrogen down to below 15 to 20 picograms per don't even complain. And again, this is not just my patient population, which is a pretty decent sized one, but I talk to other physicians in the field who say, yeah, same. Now, you might have a physician like, um, like Dr. Lipschultz who arguably is the godfather of all this medicine, right? The urologist out of Baylor. And uh, he'll he'll at least keep it within normal limits. And I would argue that the majority of doctors would do that too. To let it climb just because you're afraid of an AI, that, that makes no sense to me. And again, and I've, patients have brought me some of the videos. It doesn't prove otherwise just because some other person who doesn't state facts or misinterprets the facts or whatever says the same thing. Yeah. You know, the studies are there. Uh, maybe what we can do, I don't know if we can do this, but we can present them on the channel somehow. Uh, you know, we can, we can gather plenty of studies. But again, it doesn't take much to just write prostate cancer, comma, estrogen, and you can see all the studies for yourself. I mean, I could help interpret them because some of them are pretty complicated, but there's some really good ones out there that if you can read the research, if you want to, uh, you can do anything. Uh, they're pretty demonstrative as to how important it is to limit the amount of estrogen um, particularly when you are taking testosterone, um, because testosterone is the hormone from which we derive estrogen, right? It gets aromatized. Uh, there's also presentations about the ratio, how important it is. So you can't just blanketly say, you can't just blanketly say, oh no, don't control your estrogen at all. I just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I, let me see if I answered everything here. Um, uh, did I? I don't know. Um, sorry, I, I know I get off on tangents, but I just want to make <laughs> sure true. that, uh, and I, again, I don't mean to go off on an, an ad hominem attack, but the science needs to be there if you're going to be presenting it to people as such, and I, that's that's not what I've seen. It's very frustrating when you see a patient come in who just read something online uh, um, and decided to stop their medication. I mean, I'm, I, have you ever told, seen me tell anyone, and no doctor would do this, say, you know what, stop what you're doing right now. You know, go talk to another doctor because here's some other things to keep in mind. Uh, from what I've seen, it's just, oh, blanket, no, don't take it. And people will go, oh, well, okay, I better not do that. It's like there's too much information out there now. It's too accessible. Okay, but look who you're getting, and again, I don't I mean know. to attack, but yeah. who are you getting the information on? Someone who sees patients every day? or someone who can go and, and has, in my opinion, gone to look at the, the studies and misinterpreted them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just wanna make sure the HCG, um, along with the uh, Cipionate and AI may be a good idea. Again, we've talked about reasons for adding HCG or not. Right. Uh, so I don't really have a comment there, but he says the question, um, AIs will block the conversion from testosterone and estrogen. The way you want to control the estrogens themselves, for example, to block the conversion from estriol or estradiol into what we would all consider, uh, I think across the board, everyone would consider estrone as a so-called bad estrogen. You might want to include some DIM or eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, mustard green uh, family stuff uh, because you get the DIM which will convert to something called I3C or indole 3 carbonyl, which will block that conversion. Uh, you can't just take I3C, 
you can take an, a dim pill, dianomethane pill, cost you 20 cents a day for a 200 milligram capsule if you don't like your veggies, mm. and, and that will protect you from the so-called bad estrogens. And that's important too, because one of the things that uh, Joe and I, Joe Franceschi and I, another practitioner with us here, have been doing is lately getting a estriol, estrone, and estradiol sensitive panel. Because uh, we've noticed that guys are still having symptoms sometimes from um, either over or under suppressing the estradiol sensitive. Because we used to use estradiol sensitive as a surrogate marker for all the estrogens. Well, we're finding that it doesn't really pan out. We probably shouldn't be using it as a surrogate marker at least all the time, and maybe never. We're going to find more information and put it together, and maybe you know present it you know formally later. But uh, we'll see. For example, today I saw an estradiol sensitive of 4.6 and an estrone that was 94, which is clearly outside the range. Our range goes to 65, uh, and I'm not giving you measurements just to keep it yeah. simple. But um, uh, that's interesting, right? Because using estradiol sensitive as a surrogate, you say, oh, well, you're over-suppressing your estrogen. I would have, have been saying that. But yet your estrogen is still high. So what do we do about that? And it, this all stemmed from a very interesting case I won't bore you with, but having all the symptoms despite bearing as E2 as estradiol sensitive, we found that his estrogen was off the chart. So we threw in some DIM, corrected the situation. Um, so... It just points to the fact that it's not always as simple as we like to hope it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, science is just that. It's always changing. We do the best we can with the information we have at the time. But um, the AI obviously will help the conversion in general. But within the uh, different estrogens, we want to control them a little differently. And the best way I know of, again, is with the DIM uh, or, the, or the foods we mentioned. Um, other than that, I don't see any questions that I missed. Do you? No, I think that was a okay. concern mostly. All right. Good one. Thanks.